So now we need to start thinking about how we're going to develop our Revit training project. So we've still got training project open, as you can see at the top of the screen there. I'm going to go to my project browser and make sure that I'm in level one. You can see it's bold there. If I double click on level two, that's the next default level up in this particular Revit project. I want to be at level one. That's going to be my ground floor level. So what I can do now is start thinking about utilizing some 2D CAD drawings as a base for my Revit project. This is the benefit of all the Autodesk products. You can bring in something like an AutoCAD drawing and you can utilize that and Revit will pick up the information. It will pick up the grid lines, for example, and the column centers and so on. So let's have a look at how we import a DWG file. Now it doesn't have to be a DWG either. There are other file formats that can be imported. So go up to your insert tab, like I have on the ribbon, and go to import CAD. And just hover over it and you'll see there, you can import data from not just DWG, which is the AutoCAD drawing file, but you can use DXF, which is a neutral drawing exchange format, hence the DXF file suffix. DGN, which is a Bentley MicroStation file format, another CAD product. SAT, which is another 3D file format, and SKP, which is a SketchUp file. So you can bring all of these different file formats straight into Revit and utilize them. So if I click on Import CAD, what happens? It goes to my projects folder, it knows where I saved my Revit project, and it goes there first. So there's an AutoCAD DWG, you can tell by the icon, the yellow and the blue. So I'll select that now, and you can just about see it there in the thumbnail. So it's a floor plan, metric drawing, training project. I've renamed the DWG that file name so that we can recognize it. Now, you have a choice with all these settings down here. You have colors preserve. Now, a lot of the time, I don't tend to preserve the colors. They can be a little bit intrusive, so I'll make that black and white. Layers, levels, all of them, yes, please, because I need the grid lines and things. Import units, it will auto detect those for you if necessary. It will also correct lines that are slightly off axis. So if you've got a grid line that's slightly wonky, slightly askew, it will correct those lines for you that aren't lined up, either vertically or horizontally, grid lines, for example. Positioning, you can go auto center to center or auto origin to origin. Origin to origin is good and auto is even better because you don't have to think about it. However, there may be a requirement to manually use origin, base point or center. The best one, if you don't know any coordinates in the AutoCAD drawing, is to go auto origin to origin, like that. And you will orient it to view. So in this particular case, it's level one. So it's a flat 2D view in my Revit structure project. So it will orientate it flat in the 2D environment like a plan. So when I click on open now, it takes a few seconds to load up, but it will bring it in. And as you can see, it's thinking about it. You've got the little arrow bubble going around there in Windows 7, as you can see. And it's loading up my CAD file. Now, this does take a little bit of time because it's going and finding that file, finding all the information from that file. And as you can see, it's processing it, and there it is there. Now, the one thing you may find, because I've done origin to origin there, can you see that some of my elevation markers are out of whack? So they're not in the right place. We can move those around at any time. More importantly, though, look, if I click on that now, can you see? I can actually click on that, and it's pinned in place. So what I can do is I can unpin it, and I can then move it if I need to. Click, drag, and move. Now, I haven't actually got any given coordinates here, so I'll just line that up so it's just inside those markers, like that, and then I'll repin it again. And these markers now can actually be moved. So if I now just pan down a bit, zoom in a bit, and I can click on that marker there, and I want to move it. So I click, and I can drag it, and I can move it if need be. So I'll just select it like that, click and drag, I'll just pop that about there like that. So that's my north elevation. And I'll just pan again, zoom in. Best way, select everything using a window like that. But they're all lined in. Double click there to zoom extents, and you've got everything in place. You've got your CAD drawing sitting there, ready for you to start placing things like grids. Now, all of this is AutoCAD information. So it's not relevant in Revit, but what you've done now is you've imported your DWG ready to start utilizing that 2D information in your 3D Revit structure project.